Johnny, what up, man? How are you? Good, brother. Good, good. Great to be on here with you. So the art of masculinity, and you were just telling me that you went up to Michigan and you got a pig. Yes. <laughs> Tell me about the pig, man. So Tell me wife. about the pig as a pet. It's, it's in your house. <laughs> it's a pet, bro. This ain't bacon, right? And I, I actually, yeah. like, I joke with my wife all the time. I was like, this thing keeps acting up. Like, it's going to turn into bacon. But she's, uh, <laughs> yeah, my wife, my my wife had my wife had this pot belly pig when she was younger grew, grew oh up with one God. and she's like ever since she's like when we get a house like we're gonna go get a pig and i was like sure whatever she finds a breeder up in western michigan so we take the rv up there so we take it up it's like a two-day trip to go pick this thing up and we go pick up this little freaking like 10 pound pot belly juliana pot belly pig this thing's gonna get to be the size of like a small to medium sized dog like 20 to 30 pounds right and uh it, it lives in the house with us and it's a it's a stubborn asshole by the way like they're like you're kind of jerks sometimes but <laughs> what <laughs> yeah well I, i've never heard of this like how do you how do you do this like how do you have a pig as a pet Dude, we have two dogs, a cat, and a pig now in the house. Like and the we dogs have like a are cool farm the pig? in the house. Is everybody cool? Everybody yeah, gets man, along? Well, sh- <laughs> yeah, the cat and the pig are kind of like sisters. Like they play fight all the time. Like the cat will come up and just like whack her right in the face and then run away. And then like uh the pig will chase the dogs sometimes. And um, so like the the little pig like chases one of them around and he's a big dog, but he doesn't like it, so he just like runs away. And then we have another dog. She'll like jump all over it. And she just kind of like lays there and she's like, whatever. So yeah, man, they're all slowly getting along, but it is, it, it's work, man. These pigs are, they're, uh, it's like training. It's like, imagine a toddler mixed with a dog. That's what it is. Like a toddler mixed with a dog. Fuck. All right. <laughs> Don't talk to my yeah, kids. We're, we're not getting a pig. No. Dude, don't do it because they they look so yeah, cute. No. But man, they're they're like they're stubborn and they're smart. It's not like a dog. You know, a dog you can like whack on the butt like if they do something wrong and they learn, right? These pigs, you if you whack them or something on the butt, they actually get meaner to you. They're like, oh, now I'm gonna do it again, and you're like, wait, what? This turned on me real fast. So do these do people <laughs> eat these types of pigs too, or no? Is it not like an edible thing? It's, I don't know that it's not like an edible thing, but they're like essentially kind of conditioned. They're not like the big hogs. So they're not okay. really conditioned to be meat. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't imagine you couldn't eat them, but like, I don't right. think people eat them. <laughs> so, okay. and my wife has threatened me if I try to eat this one. So don't, yeah. Okay. Listen to your wife. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I just did anyway. a, I, I did a pork. I did a pork butt. I did a pork butt shoulder the other day on yes. my smoker, and I was like, "Don't!" I was like, "Don't tell the pig! Don't tell the pig! It's one of its friends." We're eating his cousin. <laughs> We're eating his cousin right now. It's still fucking delicious. It's goddamn delicious. Uh, I didn't know uh, you were a barbecue. What kind, of, what kind of smoker do you have? Uh, I just got one of these pit bosses, but I actually want to get out and get one of the uh, um. A friend of mine uh, is connected with a company who came up the same time as like Traeger Mm -hmm. and they have these amazing pellet smokers that he swears by. He's an executive chef. He swears by them and says it's a it's not as expensive as a Traeger and it's just as good or if not better. It's 100 percent American made. So I was like, I'll give it a shot, bro. (laughs) Get the Traeger, bro. Get the Get the Traeger. Oh. I haven't. Yeah, like, I get that's okay. the, that's the Hold next on. step. I'm probably where am I? I'm probably like ten grills in now in my life. Uh, oh wow! And this, yeah, I have two smokers currently. Uh, one that I thought <laughs> I would never go back to the Traeger from because I, I I had a Traeger ten years ago when they first started. You know when they first started becoming a thing. Mm. Um, yeah. They stepped their fucking game up, homie. I have never cooked as well as I'm as I cook on this Traeger. Like, oh, get the man. Traeger, get the two thousand dollar Traeger. Like, just do it, just <laughs> fucking do just it. Because then you don't you don't have to get another grill, right? Like, if you mm. when you get the cheaper model ones, right? Like, think about all the time yeah. you, you you wasted dating, right? 
you're getting the cheaper <laughs> model girl like you know like you're getting these girls that you're not really into you know but like okay this is where i am right now and then you waste like got yeah. all these fights and all these headaches and all this bullshit when you could like and this is a terrible fucking example where you could now you're married and you're fucking happy just get married and be happy right away Okay, with the with the girl, and I'm <laughs> comparing a human. I'm comparing a fucking human to an inanimate object. Um, this is toxic masculinity, <sighs> and in its point, in its greatest form, <laughs> at its finest right now, at its finest right now. Oh, that's oh, so shit. good. I love it, man. So, uh, you and I met like just. I had a friend who told me to like go look at people on the fucking internet. Oh, on on Instagram, like you yeah. actually use Instagram rather than see how many likes you can get on a fucking video or a right. Like, so I did, and I've been doing yeah. it ever since, and it works really well. And that's how you and I met. I just literally sent you a message, and then you actually responded. And we've talked yeah. a couple times. I went on your podcast. We canceled my podcast like thirty times because I don't know. I got COVID, and then trips, and then this, and then that. But here we are. <laughs> we're doing it. So, um. Man, what yeah. was what yeah, was bro. it like for you to have somebody like do you have it often? Somebody just reach out and say, yo, what up? Yeah, I get people that reach out, man, but like it's it, you like the cool thing about you is obviously once we actually started talking, like you're obviously just an authentic dude. And like you are just cool with who you are, you're confident, but you also know you like you've done some true work on yourself. So like the conversation with you is really cool. A lot of times when guys do reach out, man, it gets kind of really pitchy and salesy. And then you're kind of like, well, are you trying to sell me something? Are you trying to, are you just trying to sell your product on my show? Like, and so I, I just like you, man, I want to have great conversations that are really going to help people. And that's really like why when I saw your message and then I looked you up and stuff and I saw a couple of mutual friends that kind of follow you and stuff. Um, I was like, okay, this guy seems really cool. Let me reach out to him. And then when we got on a call, it totally was like, we connected really fast. And it was it was really good, but yeah, it gets kind of weird sometimes. Guys get real salesy and shit on there. So weird. Some dude was telling me that I need to stop. Like I, you know, I reached out to him. You know, like just like kind of a similar thing. I was like, oh, he's yeah. kind of cool. I kind of liked it. And then he started telling me that I needed to start to take charge of my life and stop being afraid and be a coward. And I was like, yo, bro, uh, <laughs> what? what? <laughs> huh? <laughs> huh? <laughs> like I was like, oh. really? Like. Oh. Like, did well, you do did the, you do any the, research here? Like, <laughs> what, are you, you, what are you fucking you talking look about? Look at who I am. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, well, the the weird thing is, dude, is when you reach out to people too who are like kind of big, like they're kind of like well known. I, I don't like to say bigger because like I hate giving people gradation, but like when you see when you find people who have a little more of a following and like they're well known in the industry, and you reach out to them and they respond back like, "Hey, get some more followers, and then I'll come on your show." I'm like fuck you bro like i don't need you to build my show i just thought you had a good story but wait for being a douchebag yeah <laughs> so that that one kills me but the dude that said this to me had yeah. less he was less on it like yeah <laughs> like i'm like bro <laughs> oh you know, my god I, man. I, I was like because i generally don't reach out to people with bigger followings than me i try to i try to go the other way you know with you know, not 10 yeah. followers, but like, you know, somewhere, somewhere in there, less maybe, but that doesn't really matter to me because I, uh, I right. find that the conversation's a little better, right? Especially like mm -hmm. it's, but this one, I was like, yo, dickhead. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> like I was super annoyed. I'm, like, I've never heard of somebody saying that shit. <laughs> he was literally like, why don't you, he's like, you need to start doing something with your life. And I was like, what? <laughs> Like, and I'm not saying I've like, done please. everything. I'm, yeah. I'm not saying I've done everything, bro, but I, I've done a couple of things. <laughs> right. Please come see me. I will be at this location. <laughs> so, oh, man. Anyway, let's get more into you. So, uh, uh, the art of masculinity. You know, yeah, like brother. Th this. Yeah. Tell me, tell me more. Tell, tell me, tell me what got you to go start going down this path. Tell me your, tell, I want to hear your story. Where did it start? Yeah, man. Um, just, just like you, dude, I was in, in elite field. So I was in special operations. I was U S army range 
soldier, spent four combat tours overseas in spec ops. And then I also went over and protected the U.S. ambassador to Iraq for five years out of Baghdad with a private company. So from about 18 to 28, I, I spent 10 years in and out of the Middle East. And I saw, you know, I rubbed shoulders with some of the baddest dudes on this planet, um, you know, have done some, some, you know, cool things, some done some highly hostile, dangerous things. And when it came back to it and you really connect with your brothers, you start to find out like a lot of these guys are struggling, but they don't want to really talk about it. And a lot of it is the fact that there's no permission there to talk about it. Or the only time they'll talk about it is when you guys are getting hammered at a bar or you guys get back from a deployment and you're having a barbecue at their house and they want to talk then because they're drunk. Right. But then there's none of these outlets for these guys like, during when they're actually cognitive and like sober and you start to see a lot of these guys are struggling with their, their relationships, their wives, they're struggling with their children. They're struggling with just even coping, being home around normal people because they have a different expectation. They have this judgment level for a lot of people. I had that too. And this is where I was struggling. I came back from doing all this shit overseas and came back home and had a really toxic first marriage. Uh, it started to go south. I tried to do what I could to fix it, but I wasn't in a mental space to do that. And neither was she. So it ended up turning into a divorce. But in all the midst of that, I really lost who I was from the man I created when I was Thracians, the man that I was when I was super confident and believed in my purpose. Right. And so what I did was I was really struggling with my own transition back to the real world. I was tr I was struggling with negativity towards everybody else, with judgment, with anger, with drinking, with all of this stuff, with this sadness, you know, depression, kind of toxic mindset of who I was as a man. And I was like, dude, I can't. I'm better than this. I need to get out of this. And so one of the things that I, I had on myself was I had a big chip on my shoulder of of listening to other people who maybe had maybe not had some cool background like I did, but they had something good to say about how to get your mind right. And I had this big chip on my shoulder. And at the time I, I had a friend and who turned into my wife now, but we were, we were just friends and she was like, Hey, maybe you should start listening to a couple of these podcasts. And I'm like, well, who are these guys to tell me how to live my life? What have they done? Like I've been kicking in doors at 18 years old and, and freaking getting shot at. What have these guys done? So I was like, whoa, I, I need, needed a step back. But I started reading a book called Excuses Be Gone by Dr. Wayne Dyer, the late, great Dr. Wayne Dyer. And he writes like just a like you're sitting in the ring getting slapped in the face, dude. That's how he writes. And you're like, whoa, like you just called me out, bro. I was making up all these excuses on why I didn't want to listen to people. And I'm like, what does that say about me as a man if I can't open up to hear other people's opinions on how maybe I could better my own life? So as soon as I read that book, I took a, lo a, a long introspection at who I was and how I was coming off as a man in this world. And I was like, bro, this isn't, this isn't my authentic self and it's not my highest self. There's, I'm, not, I'm not anybody that is, is motivating people to be better and I'm not motivating the, the next generation of men to have a good mindset. So as soon as I did that, I started to open up and started listening to some podcasts and listening to the tools that were getting passed out about how to get your mindset and how to really believe back in yourself and find your own authenticity. And then I started to do a lot of research into masculinity and I started to do my own education on basically where we've started in, in society and where, where we're kind of programmed now to be. And that has helped me to really find this all encompassing kind of platform to where I can start to help educate guys from the basic level and then teach them about the struggles that I went through and that the struggles a lot of these elite guys go through like yourself, which is why you were great on the podcast because guys can hear about this bad dude that freaking stood in the ring toe to toe with some other Titan men and still can be real about how he struggled with his own mindset, how he struggled with his family, how he struggled with his relationships that's where I found that I needed to serve guys. And at the end of it, I realized too, if I was blocking myself from learning from other men on, in this world because I didn't respect their background, then maybe if I used my background similar to like how you use your background to get people to maybe just crack the door open and say, I respect this guy enough to listen to him. Like 
that's what I, I love to do. So using my background to give guys that permission to say, well, maybe I can listen to this guy because he's got something to say and he's done some shit. And then they listen and maybe they gain something that helps their lives. That's where it really hits home for me. So that's kind of where it started. And then now where I am with the podcast with the art of masculinity, brother. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So, I mean, I think I, I want to touch on what, what you were saying there towards the end. I, th I think, yeah, like it, it is such a big thing for guys. Like I know I had it like, man, almost like what we were just joking about with, with the dude who hit me, who I hit up and then responded kind of poorly of like, man, what have you done? Yeah. Like we, oh, we have that. Like, you know, especially when we've done mm -hmm. some shit, right? Especially yeah. when we've done some shit in our lives and you start, but, but, but your life isn't going how you want it to go, right? Your life, but you're mm -hmm. like, I'm not going to listen to that dude because that dude hasn't done what I've done, but I have, but you haven't done what he's done either. Right? right. So that like, that's a weird thing. And where I do think that the intersection really is great is guys like you, you know, who, uh, you have done shit for real, like scary, scary shit that people are like, oh my fucking God, I, I could never do that. And mm -hmm. it's, and you, you can talk about your feelings. You can talk, you can be aware mm -hmm. of, of your emotions and, and speak about that. This, this is what we're really starting to see coming. This is what I think we need to see more of, right? Not this, mm -hmm. not this idea of the stoic man, even though they, uh, they get stoicism wrong, right? Because that's not what the stoic, like yeah. the, what, what people think the stoic man is, is not the stoic man. So, um, yeah. What was your, uh, difficult time like? Like, what was that like for you? Let's, 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 what, explain it a little bit so people can understand what your difficulty sounded like or felt oh, like. Oh, man. It's a, such a great <clears throat> question, brother. And I, I've really never been asked that, but that did difficult time was it was complete loss loss of self man like i was living for the weekends like so many people do i wasn't trying to enjoy the journey i was on and i was only living for the weekends because then i could drink and hang outside and throw something on the smoker right and like but there was no actual improvement for myself there was no motivation to do something better or sit down and flip on a freaking football game for three hours and then all of a sudden you're like what did i just do for three hours like i literally did nothing and i sat here and watched something that has no bearing on how my life goes right and so I really struggled with the fact that it was just a sadness, man. It was a, it was a, I felt lonely. I felt like I didn't, and, and to add it, I had no real close friends in the area, but it doesn't mean you can't reach out to your friends on the phone, right? It doesn't mean you can't call them now on zoom or, or like have conversations. So on all, on top of all that, my, my only outlet was really the gym. That's been a part of who I am. And that was literally what kind of pulled me out of it because I start, I, I got into, I did a show for bodybuilding and it gave me a goal, a sense of purpose, just a, just a little sense of purpose for a 12 week period where, you know, I was strictly on this regiment for training. And so when I realized that though, I was really just in this negative mindset, man, everything was toxic to myself. Everything was toxic around everybody else. It was, it wasn't like, I, I didn't want to give anybody else respect because they weren't from the community I was from. And so when I dove down that path of just negativity, it was, it was, it was literally finding your lower self and being him every day when you, but you knew that there was something more, right? You knew there was something better. And so as I continued to do that, it just, it was this complete lack of purpose. And the biggest realization was like when I would sit there and start to be like, what the hell is my purpose right now? And then I thought back to the man that I was when I was fighting for this country, when I was fighting for this flag, when I was shoulder to shoulder with the men that were doing other, you know, putting their lives on the line every night. It was like, wow, how am I doing any of them a service by the shit that I, the, the mindset I have, the, the, life that I'm creating right now. And the other biggest thing is we lost a couple of great men while we were overseas. And we always, I have a bracelet where I wear them every day. And it was, I looked at them and didn't say like, oh man, I feel sorry because they died. I look at them and say, how am I living a life of purpose that they would have been proud of? Because they wouldn't be sitting here thinking to themselves, oh man, let's drink. Let's like, remember the dead and like not live in a positive light. 
but it's really like, how am I living for them? Cause they're not here to live that life anymore. They would be looking at me like, wow, dude, great, cool. Another weekend drinking. Good. Great. Like you, what are you doing with your life? How are you serving other people? How are you upholding the values that we had in special operations? Like, how are you bringing that forward to the world? And that's really, it, it was like a, it was doubt. It was loss of self. It was sadness. It was, uh, it was, um, uh, a lot of shame and guilt, not because of the fact that I, not like survivor's guilt, but the fact that I wasn't living and they didn't have the opportunity to continue that life. Right. I think that's so interesting that no one's asked you, you said no one's asked you that question. Uh, it's always my, I love that question. Like what, what, what did the bad look like? You know, cause we can it's all so find, <clears throat> we can all find a similarity in, in the bad, you know? And, and I think mm -hmm. we, like, uh, of, of struggle. Right, we all know what struggle looks yeah. like. So I, I, I'm very interested in what other people's struggle looks like. Um, you said this word a couple times now. Purpose. You said it. I don't know, like ten times. Um, God, it's so <laughs> important, right? It's so fucking important because when you wait, when you when you don't, I, I think you see it on two ends. You see it on on the people that are really suffering and and need to get out, like haven't haven't done anything yet, right, with their life, purposeless. And then mm -hmm. you see it on on uh, you know, especially males for sure who have accomplished. And now, you know, maybe they are rich and they, they created their company and sold it or like whatever it is and, and they're purposeless and they fucking crumble and like, you know, yeah. they, they ruin their whole lives. What is it do you think like, and, and you explained it with like the, the special forces and, and just the military in general, um, especially when you're at war, it's, it's one purpose driven and everyone's behind it. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's yep. why it works so effectively. What do you think it is about this word purpose that is so important to look? I don't even think it's just males because the mom that sits yeah. at home and t only takes care of the kids and cleans the house. Like, look, we're, we're past these days a little bit, you know, like that, that, yeah. that, like you see, that's, that's the Xanax mom, right? Like, so yeah, fuck. There's something about that word that is, <laughs> that is so crucial. Absolutely, brother. Purpose, purpose for everybody it is it, it, it's inherent in all of us. We have to have something that we're looking forward to. Like, think about like um, if you think about planning a trip, right? You're planning a vacation to Hawaii or something like that, some beautiful location. Well, you actually receive more uh, more positive chemical release physiologically in your body from planning and looking forward to the trip than when you're actually on it. And this has been done over studies showing that people actually have more positive effects from planning and anticipation than they do from actually experiencing. So when we have purpose, think about that. If you have a purpose, there's, a, there's something that you're looking forward to. Your journey to that becomes very cathartic. Your journey to that becomes uh, inviting. Your journey to that becomes that motivation for every day, right? For that higher level level for that authenticity for something more every day because you have that goal set forward now the other thing is is purpose evolves with us we all change look at who you were when you were in the ufc to who you are now right totally different men totally different mindsets purpose is totally changed I think that's the other thing too, is we can't say that purpose is ever fixated right purpose can be of uh evolving just like we are as human beings. That's where our strength comes from. Our strength comes from evolution. So our purpose comes from evolution as well. And so we get the ability to enjoy that and then change the journey to experience. This whole life is about experiential learning. It's all about what we get to enjoy, what we get to struggle through. That's what makes it all real. And purpose gives us that ability. Because if I have a purpose to say, they impact a million people's guess what is along that journey a lot of failure right there's a lot of no's there's a lot of you can't do this there's a lot of all that and then there's a lot of gratitude and support and love from the people you, you start to impact and then it becomes that snowball effect so every purpose has its ups and downs but that's the whole experience of life if we're not enjoying that and we're just like i got to get to the mountaintop 
then yeah, that's where the guy, like you said, the guy that has the multi-million dollar business that he sold is freaking dead inside and unhappy. Brendan Bouchard, Bouchard talks about that in one of his books that he talks about the guy that flew him into his house in uh, Silicon Valley at 3 a.m. And he's like, how do I, how do I live and get, and this guy's a multi multi-millionaire business owner. And he's like, how do I live with purpose? Because I'm not happy and it's affecting the rest of my life. Purpose becomes so much more and it becomes, you know, something that we can evolve with. And it becomes the, the thing that propels us into a joy in enjoying this life and experiencing this life. Yeah, that was amazing. Yeah. What done. Uh, so <laughs> You talked about another topic with, uh, I got nothing to say. You, you, I'm speechless. Um, and you said it briefly a couple of times. You didn't, you didn't say it as much as, as the purpose thing. Self, knowing yourself. And look, for me, this is so huge. Like when I, when I say, who am I? Who am I? Like, and yeah. it's a very important thing. What do you think about when you talk about self and like who, who Johnny is? Well, you know, I think the first thing we have to talk about when we look at self is we have to talk about selfishness. And I think selfishness, it's, it's not, I think, I know, selfishness has gotten huge negative connotation. But selfishness, if, if I'm going to deliver for my family, if I'm going to deliver for my kids, my wife, the people in my ecosystem, I have to have selfishness to give back to me. I have to get my mind right. I need to get my heart right. I need to get my spirit right. I need to connect with God or the universe, whatever I believe in. I need to have that connection because when I give back to me, I give back to everybody else tenfold, right? Like we have this, I think you even talked about this and I'm a huge, huge believer in this is we have these energetic cups, right? Think about these cups filled with energetic coins. And if I give energy to Elliot and I give energy to my wife and I give energy to my friends, and then I give energy to my business, well, what, what's left over for me? Like what's left over for me to give something back to myself to fill my cup so that that cup of energy is full again for the next day. We have to look at life that way. So when we talk about self, we have to talk about self-care. We have to talk about being selfish for the purpose of giving back to everybody else. I can't give people 100% if I don't give my, myself 100%. And then the, 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 the self, what we give to ourselves shows what we're going to allow ourselves to give to other people. If we don't prioritize ourselves, how are you going to prioritize anybody else? If you're constantly giving yourself the freaking one, two punch to the face and being your worst critic and never giving yourself gratitude and positivity and love. How are you going to give anybody else positivity, love and gratitude? You're not, it's going to be fake. It's going to be forced. And then you're just going to be a negative piece of shit to everybody. This man, the, <clears throat> I, I love what you're saying here because for me, I think Pete, we, we talk to ourselves so poorly, you know, like, oh, so bad. Like, ah, oh, you dumbass. Stop that. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, like, stop that. You're not a dumbass. You don't have to be a dumbass. You can just make a mistake. We all do actually. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. We all do. Absolutely. I, I read uh, Trevor Moad's book. Uh, it takes what it takes. And he, he, you know, that the, the two things that I really, really took away from it were uh, one, we talk to ourselves more than we talk to anybody else in the whole fucking world. And then two, mm -hmm. don't say stupid shit out loud. <laughs> you know? I love that policy. Yeah, and it's policy. it's really helped me, especially with not even with. I, I I'm just a big believer that what you put on yourself, you're going to put on other people tenfold because you're going to try to hide that hide that feeling in yourself. So if you shame yourself, you're going to shame pe people more because you're trying to you're trying to compare yourself yourself to them. So you're going to be like, oh, well, this person, that, and this person, that. but really it's, it's just all you, yep. how you feel about you. So if, if we can fix that part and then the way I fix it, yeah. we stop saying dumb shit out loud. Uh, it, it really got much yeah. more skillful for me. <laughs> I, I love that. But this this takes us down a great road because when you're talking about this, this has been <laughs> oh, numerous. Sorry. Bless you. Numerous yeah, you. amazing people on this planet have have discovered this. And so Dr. Wayne Dyer talks about this. He talks about your 
negative I am's, right? Um, I think, uh, what's his name? Les Brown talks about your negative I am's. Mm -hmm. Like so many of these people who are pushing self-development and want you to be better are talking about the negative I am's. Well, then you look at epigenetics and Dr. Bruce Lipton. Dr. Bruce Lipton freaking talks about this and he actually puts science behind it. 70% of what our subconscious tells us is negative. We're already set up for failure. So when we sit here and constantly tell ourselves negative stuff about who we are, guess what you manifest in your world? Guess what you attract in your world? Negative shit. Every outcome becomes negative. Every interaction becomes negative. Everything that you receive becomes negative. So you're wondering, well, every time I save money, why is it I just attract something that now takes my savings away? Because you're always thinking that you don't have money. You're always thinking that you don't have the ability to have a savings account. And you're attracting shit that's going to take it away from you. But when you start to live and give yourself positive environments and and positive sayings of, dude, I'm freaking amazing. I'm going to go out and crush this. Guess what? I'm going to create a business, but I'm going to create a business because I love it. And I know there's going to be downtimes, but I know I'm capable. You start giving yourself positive sayings. It may sound stupid, man. I wouldn't, you told me this five years ago. I wouldn't have believed this shit, but you talk about it now, like start giving yourself positive sayings and start telling yourself positive shit. You will be astounded at the stuff that comes into your life, the great people that come into your life. I have a couple of athletes and they have to text mm -hmm. me every morning and they have to text me their I am's <laughs> every morning. Yes. Every morning they text me their I am's of who, what, and it's all, and, and I don't even like to call it positive. I like to call it neutral. Um, mm. You know, and, and and I think when you say I am capable, I don't think that's positive. I think that's neutral okay. because positive sure, is like yeah. I, I am the best. That's positive. Eh, right. That could not be true. And now you're lying to yourself. Right. So then it, it could fall. Mm -hmm. Right. I, f I find that when yeah. I do positive, I also will do negative. But when I do neutral. Right. I am a father, you know, like, like my girl, my one athletes, I'm amazing. I'm a student. I am relentless. I'm a fighter. I'm a mother, right? They're, they're very neutral. Like they text them to me so much. I know they're fucking I am's. So hey, <laughs> like, like, I love that. <laughs> but yeah, it That's has so made cool. a world of difference, not only in my life, because I do mine in their life too. So mm -hmm. it, it's so crazy. And, and I think part of it though, when you're getting back to the science of it is you can't have two thoughts at the same time. Right. So if you're telling yourself, I well, am, you I am amazing at the same time, you cannot be telling yourself I am terrible. So if you just repeat the, 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 the I am amazing. Well, fuck, you don't get the, you don't have time to have the other one. <laughs> yeah. Numbers yeah. And then if you, if you, yeah. And if you tell yourself, like, if people are like, all right, Elliot, Johnny, you guys are fucking crazy. I'll try this, but I guarantee you the negative is going to come out. If you tell yourself self a quote unquote lie long enough, it becomes a truth. So if you truth. tell yourself this long enough, you will believe it as the truth. And then once you believe it, there's no, there's no limitation for you. You've just broken through the limitation you've set on yourself. The negative shit is just the limitations of your ego setting on you, right? It's but not the negative true shit's not, not the true either. You. The negative is no, not true either. Not. And if you tell yourself it long enough, it will be, but it will be. You, you can make either yep. one true, whichever one you want. Man, yeah. I want to. Yep. There's that saying, uh. There's a saying, um, real quick. There's a saying, uh, whether yeah. whether you believe you can or you can't, you're right. You're right. Yeah, exactly. So let's let's choose one, not the other. Yeah. Exactly. The other word that you've used here uh, a bunch is the word toxic, and normally, and and we talk about the field that you're in, masculinity. We're really putting these two things together now in society, and I, I think I personally think it's terrible. Because I don't think masculinity is toxic I whatsoever. Um, tell me mm -hmm. your feelings on this. What 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 is this thing that is toxic masculinity that we're describing, or or that society is describing that is toxic? And then tell me what what is masculinity? What does that even fucking mean? Yeah. So like, great question. So first off, if we go back into kind of the history of like the feminist movement, right? There was the second 
wave feminist movement that really bastardized masculinity. And that's kind of like the toxic feminine that, um, and I hate even saying that because, you know, we don't want to classify femininity as toxic either, but the toxic mindset of this group of people that was basically painting all masculinity as bad because they were, they they were tired of the oppression of the patriarchy. They kind of created this subculture of the feminist movement. Well, it's a very small movement. The problem is, is they're getting a big voice in the media. And so what they're starting to say is toxic masculinity, which to me is just a bunch of bullshit. And because when you look at toxicity, let's look at its foundation. What is toxicity? Can, can I stop you for a second? Unf- can I stop you for a second? Yeah, yeah. Like you said, another word, the patriarchy. I, I do not like the patriarchy. Like I'm not a fan of of that, for example, but I don't, I don't combine patriarchy and masculinity. Do you? Um, I don't necessarily combine the two. I mean, I think there's gotta be some acceptance that, you know, we were based on a patriarchy, which is why like boys, even, even in the aristocracy, boys were valued over girls and boys carried on the name like aristocracy created this and and we were derived from that as a civilization now do i believe that it's prominent in today's world i would say that we've transitioned significantly from it and you can see that in a lot of the ways that we present you know america i don't necessarily correlate the two but we have to recognize it's played a role in how civilization has developed but when we talk about masculinity and toxicity toxicity means unfit for consumption and so what you're doing is you're saying all masculinity is unfit for consumption and that's a bunch of horseshit we can't say that because now you're classifying half the half the world as being that we're all this bad portion that's unfit for consumption and that's just that's just wrong i think that we have to understand (laughs) with anything thing. I like the word toxic for the sense of we can have behaviors and traits that we make toxic to ourselves in our lives. We don't classify toxicity with generalizations like femininity and masculinity. And so masculinity in and of itself is a beautiful thing. Masculinity has helped us to thrive as a uh, civilization and society, just like femininity has. You know, when we look back to some of the indigenous tribes and some of the more, uh, when we look back to a lot of the tribal communities around the world that are very much in touch with Mother Earth, and they're very much in touch with the feminine, um, almost matriarchy, right, in a lot of senses, when there's that balance of masculine and feminine, these tribes thrive, and there's a huge respect for one another. And that's where we see beauty in community, when both the polarity, we recognize that they're both singular in their own way and then they're also connected as well and we have to say okay we need this balance right we need this balance like you and your wife right probably have very different dynamics but when you guys balance each other you can become this incredibly cohesive unit and that's where we look at in society masculine and feminine so when we talk about it i hate toxic masculinity i think people that say that they're they're uh in my opinion, they're very negligent with their words and they're ignorant to what that actually means. They're just spewing out what other people are saying, but they don't actually understand the definition behind it. And when we talk about masculinity, masculinity in and of itself, the definition of this is basically presenting the masculine form within society. Well, what does that mean? There's no real definition. Masculine form becomes masculine traits that society deems are okay. And to me, when we talk about masculinity, masculinity becomes authenticity, right? Because if I take Elliot and we put Elliot in New York, and then we put Elliot in Alabama, the two versions of masculinity in those areas just within the United States are very different, very different. So if we took you as you are right now and put you in one of those states and said, okay, how do you, do you feel comfortable as the man you are here based on the masculinity within the state? You may say yes or no, right? But at the end of the day, masculinity has changed even regionally. And then when you go cross-culturally, it's even very different from putting you in Italy to putting you in Brazil. It's very different what's masculine in those areas. So masculinity in its truest form has no actual, in my opinion, definition of traits. There's nothing that presents consistency. And this is shown across studies sociologically. But 
what I believe is masculine is owning your authenticity and confidence in the man that you show up as in this world. Yeah, I agree. It's doing what's necessary. Can you, yeah. and you can't do that if you're not being authentic. And, and right. sometimes even in my own household, what's necessary changes, right? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. Uh, like there's, there's some things that definitely drive me insane. Uh, when I hear other men say them and, and most of it comes or like comes around children. Uh, I'm mm. watching or babysitting my kids, dude, get mm -hmm. the fuck out of here. <laughs> like, what, what, oh, are you, man. what are you fucking talking about? I've never yeah. watched my kids ever. Like I mm -hmm. watch them play sports, but I've right. never been like, other than that, I care for them. I, raise yeah. them i father them you know yeah like like when people go I don't, I don't know i think dads you know i think dads and men should be able to do do it all <laughs> you know like if it's time mm -hmm. to cook it's time to cook if mom's out of town for a week yeah mom, mom can go out of town mom can and, and it might feel different but the house shouldn't be dirty the laundry should still be done the kitchen's clean like like i, I like i we're not eating ramen for a week like that one is just <laughs> beyond me, you know, it, it, I, I, yeah. I don't get it. Like it, it really is, is strange to me, but you know, I, yeah, I don't know. So, that, there, that's where so I'm much, seeing the, go ahead. There's so much to that too, is, is that guys don't truly understand who they are. And then they're terrified because they lack the confidence in who they're showing up as they're terrified to do those things that are quote unquote feminine. Right? So they're like, Oh, that's not my role. Well, bro. Yeah, it is your role. Guess what? Because you decided to bring children into this world mm -hmm. and you get to be that positive male figure for them so that they understand that a man can do the dishes and a man can do the laundry, but a man can also go out and work on a car or play a sport or, you know, you can do these things. And that's balancing that polarity of the feminine within all of us. Anyways, we all have it. We're all nurturers to some degree and you get to nurture your children. And that's part of being a strong masculine figure. And look, I can't fix shit. I'm really bad at it, but my wife's a boss. You know, my yeah. wife's a boss and those are both okay. Like you don't have to yeah. like, and, and I, and I, when I say these things like, Oh, eat ramen, look, look, everyone can't cook. I get it. Like it's, it's not a huge deal, but you can figure out dinner, right? You can figure yeah. out a dinner. That's not ramen. Like whether you <laughs> take it out or, you know, wh whatever it is. Right. Like, yeah. And, and again, look, I, I have ramen sometimes too, right? Like we like, it, <laughs> it's, it's fine. Right. <laughs> you know? And just like what you were saying earlier, you like you, man, maybe you watch a football game and that's fine. You watch a football game and you have yeah. some beers with your buddies. So we're not talking in absolutes here. Like, like these things never right. happen, but it, it's the idea of uh, knowing yourself and understanding what needs to get done in the world. And, and that I believe is, is always on me. Mm -hmm. And and that's the thing too. It's like, yeah, again, we're, we generalize a lot when we speak. Right. And that's fine like, right. because we can do that. But just remember, like there's a difference between having Elliot over for the game and we're hanging out, having some beers and then me hanging out by myself, watching a football game every Sunday and no one can come talk to me and I won't do anything around the house. Right. Exactly. There's a difference between those two different mindsets of a man sitting down and doing that action. So uh, that's what we have to understand too, is there's the balance because there's the intention behind it and the mindset behind it as well. If the mindset is negative and it's an escapism, right? Like for instance, I always use golf as a huge thing because there's so many men that, that love to go out and play golf, right? And it's sometimes it's a bro hangout time, right? But golf takes a long time. You're out there three, four, five hours, right? So you're right. out there and you're, you're doing something that may be for yourself. And if the mindset is this helps me get grounded so I can come back and be a great father and a great husband, that's cool. But if it is, I need to escape the wife and the kids, that's not cool. Very different mindsets behind that action. So I think for us as men, the whole point is, and to you, to your point, Elliot, we're not sitting here saying all of these things are bad for you to do. What we're saying is check your awareness behind it. Check your mindset behind it as a man and figure out, is this benefiting me in the sense that I am doing it so I can be better? Or is it creating a more negative version of me to where I'm worse when I come out of it? 
my friend my friend Vinny talks about it all the time. You have to peel one layer of the onion back from the activity to the why are you doing the activity, right? Like you have to peel yeah. a layer off that onion and, and look at the next the next piece. It's not it's never the activity, right? It's mm -hmm. never the activity. Man, it was my wife and I's 20 year. We've been together for 20 years and we just were in oh, Vegas wow. uh, over the weekend uh, or Sunday, yeah. Monday, Tuesday. And man, look, I had no plans on day drinking, mm -hmm. but then there I was that day and we had a great time. You know, yeah, we had, we had a great time. It was a lot of fun. We spent the, the day to get, you know, so uh, day drinking ended up not being bad now. Right. Right. Which, which normally is a bad thing, right? Like we don't like, I don't day drink. I can't remember the last time I yeah. day drank. <laughs> <You know? laughs> but yeah. I was like, I was sitting there drinking this last drink. I was like, fuck, what am I doing? I don't do this. <laughs> like, but, it, but we had a great time and she had a great time too. Um, it yeah. was actually, it was actually really funny to, to tell more of the story. Uh, you got, we got a cabana and the way the cabana worked was like 600 bucks, but you had to spend 600 bucks yeah. in food. You know, like yep. you had to buy that. You were spending the 600. So right before we were getting ready to leave, the, the waitress comes up to us and she's like, you have $375 left. And I was like, <laughs> oh God. <laughs> right? and, and she was like, and, and we were like, well, can we give it to you? And she was like, no, they stopped that. I was like, so you're telling me the Cosmo is just going to get this money. And she was like, yeah. And then my wife was like, well, can you give us a bottle? Uh, uh -huh. and then she comes back and she's like, well, I can give you this bottle. And I Googled it to see how much it cost. It was 42 bucks. And I was like, I can't uh -huh. fucking spend $375 <laughs> on a 42 bottle. Like, like, <laughs> like, no. So, uh, so they were like, well, I was like, what can we do? She's like, you could buy the bar shots. I was like, buy everybody shots. Uh -huh. Right. And then we buy them shots. And then she comes back. She's like, you have $175. Left. I was like, buy them another round. So. Because oh my god! The, what else are we going to do with it, right? So we had a great time. Normally, day drinking is not the best thing, right? But yeah. it, it was a great activity. We had a great day. So again, peel a layer of the onion back, as my friend says. Look at the why of why it's happening, not necessarily the activity, the football, the car, the, the golf, however yeah. you want to look at it, right? Absolutely. And that's well said. Yeah. It was, yeah, it was man, I was like, I can't believe I'm fucking drunk at four. What am I doing? And it doesn't take a lot to get me drunk. So the second drink and I'm I'm good. So because I don't I don't yeah, drink woo. often. Yeah, I'm like, you're like I sober like, up really like fast. Girls too. gone wild. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I like to close it up, bro, with two questions. Um, one yeah. is I believe. Uh, hold on, sorry, not that's the last one. What made you answer the 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 Instagram message that I sent? Right, because. You know, I'm not, I can't really do much for you other than maybe friendship, right? Uh, it's yeah. not like I, I have an offer of like, yo, I'm Joe Rogan hitting you up or Tim Ferriss or Jocko who have these massive platforms that like, you know, if any of us got on that, like our platform would probably double, you know, I, I don't have that. And, and you don't have that for me either, right? Like, so yeah. what, what, what made you say, okay, I'm, I, I, I'm going to respond, Oh man, this is such a good question. And honestly, what it is for me in, in my life now is that I've found out that the unexpected are the greatest gifts that we can have. And so when I open myself to a conversation with, with you who I didn't know, when I open myself to opening a message from another guy and saying, hey, brother, would love to connect. When I open myself to myself to to people and to situations, the unexpected becomes something that is really cool and could be beneficial in my life as a friend, right? Or as something that comes into a business partner later, right? All of a sudden, you find yourself having these conversations. You just never know where this takes, takes you. And that was really hard for me because I was in an environment of special operations where we couldn't talk about who we were or what we did. And then when I did protection, you always had to look at what people were trying to extrapolate out of you for information. And so you always were guarded. And at this place in my life through my own development, like I still have a sense of guardedness, but I have this 
point where I'm like, man, let me open myself. I'm very capable of handing myself in so many different situations from intellectual to physical, but let me just open myself because if I can handle it and it goes south, that's fine. But let me open myself to some experience that may come out of this that could be extremely beautiful and enlightening. So that's what it was, brother. I love it. And yeah, like whenever I ask that question, it's not, I always like the answer. It's not me in particular that I'm asking you about, right? It, it's how you see the world. That, that's what I'm real. That, that's yeah. the question, right? Is like you can get a glimpse of how someone sees the world when they answer a very specific question. Like, why did you mm -hmm. even respond, right? It, that, that's your vision. You know, that's your vision of yeah. the world. It's got nothing to do with me. So um, great answer. My last question yeah, is, I, I believe everyone has a unique power like something that makes them amazing. It doesn't necessarily make them money or maybe it does, you know, LeBron's does, you know, uh, <laughs> what is, what is your power? Oh, uh, so what I believe my, my, I'm, I've come to learn one of my great powers is, is the, it's, it's nothing sexy, but it's the fact that I can, ex I can read highly, highly intellectual things and then synthesize it down so people can really understand it. And so for me, what that's created in my life is now it's led me to have a platform where I can really help men um, mm. and help them synthesize synthesize complex stuff that maybe, and not saying they're stupid, but maybe they don't have the time or maybe they just don't have the capacity to be like, I'm going to understand that. It allows me to get involved in things and read things and listen to things and understand it and bring it down to a level that's really palatable and understandable. And so for me, that becomes a beautiful thing because at the end of the day, that's how I can help guys improve their lives. That's how I can give them tools that maybe really way up here that we can bring down to down here and then it becomes tangible and applicable. So my superpower really is, is being able to synthesize complex information to get it down to something that's more tangible and acceptable to the average person. Neil, you, yeah. You, you have like the Neil deGrasse Tyson effect. <laughs> right, like that, that dude. That I, I can watch him talk about astrophysics. I can't. Well, I can't listen to anybody else talk about astrophysics. You're like, get the yeah. fuck out of here, right? Like, what? Huh? Yeah. You know, yeah. but he, yeah, he can. You, I, I can. You know, that dude toured the toured the country, toured the world, doing shows about astrophysics, mm -hmm. and 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 like filled stadiums with like men and women that are just like average, like me and you, right? Like, yeah. like that that yeah. have no no science in them at all. So. That's yep. really cool. That's a cool yeah, superpower. Like if you can, if you like in your field, like, I think that's a badass thing. If you can be like, okay, you don't got to go listen. You don't got to go take that fucking 10 hour course. I got you. Give me one hour. I got you. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Um, thanks for coming on, man. Tell everyone where they can reach you. Tell them what you're, you know, what, what's the best ways to communicate with you if they are looking for some help or want to work with you or whatever it is. <clears throat> yeah, brother. First off, I just want to say, I appreciate you. Number one for reaching out. Um, to me, because this has started a great friendship off because I, I, I love talking to you. You're always yeah. fun to be around you. You have a great energy even through Zoom and even through over the phone, man. So I appreciate you for that. But then also just appreciate you for giving me the opportunity on this platform to talk and share with your community, brother. Um, so thank you for that. Uh, yeah, thank you. If, for me, if anybody wants to find me, you can find me at johnny.lsasser on Instagram. That's where I hang out most of the time. And then um, my website's just johnnylsasser.com. Uh, I have a groups men course. We're in the middle of it right now. We'll be running it again uh, in about like, you know, a couple months. So if you're interested in it, just DM me. Uh, it's a 12-week men's course. And then I run a men's event um, down in Corpus Christi for guys. We actually have an October one, the 21st to the 24th that's coming up and we're about halfway full. So we have about five more slots and okay. it's a really cool experience where we wrap VIP with a little bit of special operations fun with self-development. So it's like this really cool environment. It's a, it's a three day experience that I really just love bringing to guys. So if you're interested in it, DM me on IG, shoot me a message and we can talk about getting you to be involved in it in October. Man, I love it. Uh, one of the other things that I love too was uh, when you and I talked for the first time that uh, I, I asked you who your wife, you, you're describing your wife a lot and what she does. And I was like, oh, who's your wife? And she, and she was somebody that I had already followed on IG because I like what she puts <laughs> out too, right? I'm into that hippy dippy shit, you know? And I was like, oh shit, that's yeah. your wife? No fucking way. So um, <laughs> that, that was, a, that was, I thought that was a very uh, interesting fact as well. So 
Um, yeah. I think it's super cool she's that a- you, you that you are like, you know, in this masculine side and she's in this feminine side and like, she's super hippy dippy and you don't come off hippy dippy other than the fact that you did let her get a pig. Um, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's really cool to show like what real masculinity is, right? It's got nothing to do with any particular trait or behavior or anything like that. Right. It, it's, it's an all encompassing how you walk through the world. So fuck yeah, man. Hell yeah. Yeah. Brother. I appreciate, I appreciate that. On. Yeah. Guys, as always, uh, Johnny has his power and I have my power. Don't go out in the world and try to be him and don't go out in the world and try to be me. I want everyone to go out there and find your power.